Hi everyone! In the last video, we explored the process of creating a spherical image sequence of the Terrigen environment from the position and flight path of the aircraft. This image sequence can be used by other 3D software packages in order to light additional 3D assets, such as the beauty pass for the three aircraft in our shot. In this video, we want to create an image sequence for a section of clouds that occlude the three aircraft at the beginning of the shot as they pass through the multiple cloud layers. This cloud element will allow the beauty pass of the three aircraft, rendered in another 3D software package, to be correctly composited together in between the clouds in front of the aircraft and the Terrigen environment image sequence behind them. The concept behind this technique is fairly simple. We'll use one of Terrigen's built-in objects, called a card, to block out everything visible behind the aircraft formation. When the image sequence is rendered, only the clouds in front of the card will be visible. When all the elements are composited together, the beauty pass of the three aircraft can be sandwiched between this foreground cloud layer element and the beauty pass of the Terrigen environment to complete the shot. Let's start by adding a card object to the project by clicking on the Object button on the top toolbar, then the Add Object button, and select Object, then Card. Right-click on the 3D preview, and select Center on Object or Shader. Then select the card object from the list. The card object has been added to the project at the origin's coordinates, and looks like a black square. Let's modify a few of its parameters while the node properties are open. Under the Card tab, change the position parameter to Center, so that the middle of the card becomes the center of the object. Later on, we will be able to scale the card from around this midpoint. Under the Rendering tab, change the Render Type to Holdout and disable the Visible to Other Rays and Cast Shadows checkboxes. This will force the card object to render as a solid black object and not cast shadows on the other items in the scene. In some versions of Terrigen, the 3D preview will not update to reflect the black holdout values. And if you find this to be the case, under the Surface Shaders tab, click on the green plus button to the right of the Surface Shaders parameter and go to the default shader. Then set its diffuse color value to zero or black. Now the card object is ready to be placed where we want it in the scene, which is to trail just behind the aircraft formation. And there are a number of ways to accomplish this. First, if you previously saved motion data for this item in an FBX file, you could follow the steps as described in part three of this tutorial series to import the motion and apply it to the card object. We'll include the links to these videos in the description below. A second approach would be to manually create keyframes for the card object, precisely in the same manner as we did for the spherical camera in the last video. We'll include a link to that tutorial as well in the description below. For this video, we'll take advantage of having the three animated aircraft objects already in the project and simply copy and paste one of their motion paths to the card object, and afterwards, apply a small offset to the card object's z-axis position. Make sure you're at the first frame of the shot, which you can verify in the Set the Current Frame box at the bottom of the window, or just click on the Jump to First Frame button. Then select one of the aircraft objects in the Object Node list, and copy its Translate Coordinate values for the current frame by clicking on the copy slash paste coordinates button to the right of the translate values. Select the card object in the object node list and paste the coordinates in the translate fields. The card object has jumped to the new coordinates we've entered. In order for the card object to show up in the animation panel, we need to make sure we set a keyframe for these coordinates. Click on the set keyframes button directly to the right of the translate label and choose set animation key, then key all. The translate values will turn green to indicate a keyframe has been set on this frame. Open up the animation panel by pressing F7 or F8 on your keyboard, or selecting the animation panel entry under the view menu at the top of the screen. Maximize the animation panel so we can see all the entries. Expand the car object's translate channels, and also one of the aircraft object's translate channels by clicking on the small plus sign button to the left of their names. We want to copy each of the translation channels from the aircraft one at a time and paste them in the same translation channel for the card object. Select the aircraft's X channel and click on the Fit to Curve button at the bottom of the animation panel 
in order to see the entire motion curve. Click once in an empty area of the curve editor in order to set the focus on that pane. A faint dotted line on Windows or a blue line on the Mac will show up around the curve editor pane indicating it has focus. Then press Ctrl A on your keyboard to select all the keyframes on the X channel. All the selected keyframes will turn orange. Now press Ctrl C on your keyboard to copy them to the clipboard. Select the Translate X channel for the card object. Focus the program's attention on the graph window. Select all the keyframes and press Ctrl V to paste the keyframes from the clipboard into the current channel, starting at the current frame. Repeat this procedure for the other two translate channels. We want the card object to trail slightly behind the three aircraft to exaggerate the amount of cloud that will be rendered. So select its Z-axis channel, and then select all the keyframes for that channel. A small offset of about 50 meters should be enough. In the Set Amount to Move Keys input box at the bottom of the animation panel, enter the value negative 50. With all the keyframes selected, click on the Perform an Action button and choose Move by Value. The selected keyframe values will be adjusted by negative 50 meters, and the card object will now trail just a bit behind the aircraft formation. Return the 3D preview viewport to the current camera view for the project and scrub through the first 100 frames or so. You can see that the card object trails behind the three aircraft, but is very small in frame. We need it to be large enough to block out everything behind the aircraft. And this is easily accomplished by increasing the card object scale value for the X and Y axis. Set both values to 1000. And now we can see that everything that was visible behind the aircraft is blocked out by the card object. The project is now set up, and we can turn our attention to the render requirements. Let's create a new renderer for this tutorial so that we can save the image sequence with a unique file name and then use different render quality settings from the main environment render. Click on the Renderers button on the top toolbar, add a new renderer, and give it a descriptive name. Assign the project's camera to the renderer. For this cloud element, we only need to render the first 110 frames, because after this point, the three aircraft have cleared the cloud layer. You can set the frame range to render under the Sequence slash Output tab. While in this tab, you can also assign a unique file name to the image sequence in the output image file name field. Both the output image file name field and extra output images field can make use of Terrigen's internal variables to simplify the naming. For example, the default path uses the variable dollar sign left curly bracket tgd name right curly bracket. This indicates the project name as part of the file name for the rendered image. For more information about using variables, please see the link in the video description below. The three aircraft only take up a small portion of the frame. So instead of rendering the full frame resolution, we can set the crop region to only render the area containing the three aircraft. Under the Crop tab, enable the Do Crop Region checkbox, and then drag any of the corners of the red box that appeared in the 3D preview to resize the crop region. We decided that these values would work well for this element. Under the Advanced tab, set the Ray Detail Region to 360 degree detail optimal so that all the lighting conditions, reflections, and shadows are calculated all around the camera and match the main environment render pass. The project is now ready to be sent to the render farm. And once the image sequence is rendered, it can be composited on top of the 3D aircraft image sequence in order for the three aircraft to appear to be flying through the many layers of clouds. With this video, we've come to the end of this video tutorial series, exploring the process of using Terrigen in a visual effects pipeline. We've learned how to import camera and object motion files into Terrigen from any 3D software package capable of exporting FBX files as well as 3D objects in a variety of file formats. We've refined previs assets into a highly detailed naturalistic terrain 
with forest populations reminiscent of the Pacific Northwest and complete with dramatic cloud-covered skies. We hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial series. Thanks for watching.